here I am. Here we are. Yes, another week. <laughs> Y'all know I love a deranged Wendy Williams moment. Greetings, loved ones, and welcome back to another vlog. Today is Monday, and I had a very chill morning, you know, just doing the usual, grabbing my coffee, coming out onto the porch now that it's spring, and doing my work out here. So I had a little work call, which was really nice, and I just planned my whole week. I got some call stuff done with just like rescheduling appointments and, you know, making appointments for the dogs, for the vet, and like doing stuff like that. And now I'm still just hanging out on the porch, and I figured that I would start the talking portion of this vlog because for the whole morning I've just been taking like b-roll basically but I have my whole to-do list on my laptop over here and basically what the week and day is looking like today I need to print some things off some shipping labels and stuff like that and go to the post office ship some stuff off do an at-home workout finish oh I already finished my stream schedule every week I make a schedule of what the week of streams is gonna look like on twitch I also need to find a dress because our friends Tim and Cassidy are getting married this weekend and we're going to their rehearsal dinner the night before and then also the wedding. And I think that I can just wear like a dress I already have to the rehearsal dinner. I already have one in mind that I think will work, but I really wanna to try to find like a lilac spring kind of dress in town and just go and check out the shops and like see what the new hot styles are this week. So we're gonna go on a shopping trip in this vlog, okay? That's the plan, Stan. And if I can't find one in person, then I'll probably order one online and like rush ship it here because I've been putting this off finding a dress for the wedding, but what can you do? A little bit of a boring to do on the list this week is to do more of our tax stuff because I finished all of my taxes. Basically, I just need one more form because this year Finley and I are filing jointly for the first time now that we're married. And you know, it's kind of hard when you got a man who be dragging his feet. I'm like, hurry up, send your stuff in. Come on, just financial things. And then I also want to upload another short and I have to schedule a call with my my connection with my management company and basically it's just like somebody that we can talk to who like understands you know the online world and the online space like somebody else who they manage as well who we can like connect with and have a phone call with so I need to schedule my call with her her name's Maya and figure that all out and then also I need to film a brand deal this week and just really prioritize like finishing that because it's due on Friday and then later on Friday I'm going to the rehearsal dinner so I have just like a lot of moving parts and moving pieces, but I just wanted to kind of give you like an overview of the week. I also just wanted to say that I didn't upload a vlog last week because last week was one of the most chaotic weeks of my entire life. And I can just summarize it really quick for you in a short story time. Actually, I don't know how short the story time will be, but I promise you'll be entertained because it was a really wacky week in my life, okay? So that's why I didn't vlog because I just had so many things going on. So basically let's rewind to exactly a week ago on Monday of last Last week. I had just uploaded a vlog the day before on that Sunday and I was telling you guys a story about this rooster who had been attacked by the other rooster in the coop and how I had to isolate the rooster because its head was all like bloodied and they were just cockfighting basically because it's spring and the hens, they're fighting over the hens and there was just, you know, rooster drama basically. <sighs> And some of you who watch my Instagram stories, you already know what happened. But basically on Monday morning, I went and I checked on the rooster because I was going to re-release him into his coop and he was not there. And so then I was like, hmm, that's weird. And <laughs> I went and I checked the main coop because I was like, maybe somebody else let him in there and he wasn't in there as well. So then I started spiraling and I was like, oh my God, somebody probably let him back into the main coop and he got pecked to death. And then I talked to Finley about it and he was like, you know what, we're gonna get to the bottom of this. <laughs> we're gonna figure out what happened. And basically we found out that um, in the morning the rooster was no longer there and had been eaten by a fox. And I know that this is probably a lot for some of you to hear. You don't like to hear stuff like that and I don't like to hear stuff like that. But on farms, um, this happens a lot, especially around this part of Virginia, there's a ton of foxes. And I was spending a ton of time blaming myself about putting him in his little isolation coop because that coop I put him in didn't have an electric fence like the main coop did. So I was like, it's all my fault. 
it's all my fault because I didn't realize that there was no electric fence and the fox somehow broke in and got him and it's all my fault. And I'm the worst chicken caretaker ever and life is terrible. But um, then I talked to my mother-in-law about it and she was like, oh, sweetheart, like it is not your fault. Once it starts, it doesn't stop. So if you had re-released him into the main coop, he would have been killed by the other rooster either way. And you gave him a really good last day, you know, feeding him alone, giving him his water in that little coop. So I was fucked up by that uh, pretty much all of Monday after I had figured out that news because I tried so hard to save him from the bullying from the rooster and instead of fox just fucking got him and I was like nature why do you do this to me and yeah I was just really bummed about that but Finley and his whole family just helped me understand that you know either way he would have passed away so um, I don't think that it's really my fault anymore and I've let go of the blame of that situation but it was really a lot for me so please if you're feeling any blaming comments about me please don't leave them down below because I already went through all of those cycles violently crying you would have thought that an animal that like lives in my house passed away because I the cries that I was letting out were so much anyway then Tuesday comes around and I scheduled myself a gynecologist appointment because I've been telling y'all I want to get my hormones checked and do a full hormone panel just to see what's going on in my body right now. I scheduled an appointment literally through my insurance website and on Tuesday morning I went to Zumba class as normal and I scheduled the appointment for like right after Zumba. So I packed a change of clothes, a snack. I made sure that like after I got out of class that I went and I like cleaned myself up, you know, and put on a dress and like got all nice to go to the gynecologist and wasn't just like a sweaty mess and I had also spent the entire morning filling out freaking paperwork on my laptop and making sure that I'd sent in all of the forms because I was a new patient right and then I get there and the receptionist is like you haven't filled out any of the forms and I was like I literally spent the entire morning filling them out like where are they I have a confirmation email right here that says you got the forms and she was like I don't know I don't have them so then she gave me a clipboard I started filling them out and then I just hear her go oh shoot from behind the counter and I was like are you saying that towards me and she was like yeah sweetheart come up here yeah your insurance we don't take it and i was like i literally made the appointment through my insurance website like what do you mean you don't take it and she was like we don't take the silver plan we take all the other plans but we don't take the silver yeah and i was like okay well um are you sure just because like i need to double check that if i made it through my insurance website and so then she was like you know what just sit back down and keep filling out those forms and it was like multiple forms you know of like me putting in all of my information and it was taking a lot of time and she was like while you do that i'm gonna call the insurance company and just confirm but in my head i'm like why would i keep filling out the forms if they're just not even gonna be anything like they're they're meaningless basically and of course you know she calls and they're like yeah we don't take it and then she takes my forms that i filled out for no reason and shredded them and for some reason just watching her rip my forms apart after i just wasted the time and wasted my morning and drove an hour to the appointment i um started getting tears in my eyes and she was like yeah i'm sorry sweetheart you know stuff like this just happens it happens a lot actually and you just got to double check that you have to really be adamant and you know lesson learned that you make sure that you have the right insurance and you know you fill out all of the things and make sure ahead of time that it's the right plan that we take and was just like telling me that I would I didn't do it right basically when I made the appointment and I was like okay and then as soon as the door closed I just started violently sobbing and I sobbed in my car for so long there was somebody in the parking lot who saw me and it was is dark you know <laughs> like they, they probably were like damn what happened she's got some really bad news or something but in the grand scheme of things it was just that I couldn't get an appointment like I had been wanting to for a while but for some reason it was just way more poet <laughs> because I had had the bad day before and was crying again then I had to drive an hour home and I took a wrong turn and I had to go on a toll road and I had to pay seven dollars and fifty cents to go through the toll and I was like What's happening? I didn't have to go through a toll on the way here. Why am I paying a toll to go back home to an appointment that I, oh, uh, it was just terrible. You know what I mean? Really terrible. Got back home and then I picked myself back up and I went and I like treated myself to a little day out on the town. I went and got a toadstool matcha latte from my local coffee shop and went to the post office, sent off deep pop orders and just like had good interactions with people at the post office and the coffee shop and all that kind of stuff. And it made me have more hope in humanity again. Because you know, when you have insurance stuff like that or like 
like healthcare stuff like that it just gets so frustrating you're like damn like i really pay for insurance but i'm not covered to like go get my hormones checked at a gynecology appointment like why am i spending this much insurance you know it's just like shaking your fist at the u.s healthcare system anyways so i i turned my day around after that and then on wednesday i actually successfully scored taylor swift eras tour tickets so Lindsay and i are going to the nashville show the last nashville show and i got them from a subscriber who sold them to us at a very reasonable price just because she can't go anymore and she's an icon and a legend and i love her so much that was truly like whoa the highlight of my week was that wednesday news and i was just like damn yeah my bad luck is like it's gone i'm i'm going to the eras tour and i'm manifesting this and literally the tickets went on sale and i couldn't get them when they first went on sale so Lindsay and i are jazzed about that we got an airbnb like booked our flights started planning our outfits everything and then we got a house listing that came up and we saw it and we were like oh my god i kind of think that this is the house like i in my brain was like this is our house like i was fully convinced so housing update <laughs> We basically messaged our realtor and he was like, oh, I've seen that house and um, I don't know. I mean, do you guys want to come see it? Because I've toured it before and I don't really like see you guys there. But he was like, hey, if you guys see yourselves there, you know, who am I to tell you that that's wrong? So do you want to come up and see it? And we were like, yes, we want to come up and tour the house in Vermont and it's going to be awesome. So we planned to attend an open house on Friday morning. So on Thursday afternoon, I went to Zumba in the morning and then I like came came home, showered, packed, and we got the dogs in the car. And so I'm gonna include some footage in now because I thought that I was starting a vlog of, you know, finding our Vermont house, maybe, <laughs> if it all went well. All right, we're doing it. I'm going and seeing our first Vermont house since moving here. I have my laptop, my Stanley, my little protein coffee. You guys are gonna go in my purse there. My Malcolm for back support. I have everything packed in just a backpack because we're only going for two nights. And then that's all the dog stuff, as well as our road trip snacks, Finley stuff, and then Finley's also bringing currently all of the doggy beds. Come on back to the puppy palace. Come on up to the puppy palace, Larry. Come on, be sure. So the spirits were high as we went up to Vermont and uh, we had left in the later afternoon. So we were driving like eight hours up and we weren't gonna get in until like midnight to our Airbnb that we had booked. And we were just gonna stay in this cute little cabin. I had already paid for it all and got it all sorted. We were gonna stay two nights. So Thursday night and Friday night and then drive back home on Saturday morning. And when we were literally like less than an hour away from the Airbnb, right at the state line almost of Massachusetts to Vermont, we got pulled over because we had a taillight that was out and I didn't know that. I wasn't aware that we had a broken taillight. So don't think that we just took the car out being like, you know what, screw it. I don't care that my taillight's out. Like we literally had no idea. And I was looking at Finley cause he was driving and I was like, were you speeding? And he was like, no, I fully saw the cop and he like had the cruise control on every Things. So we pull over and a state trooper comes over and if you're in Massachusetts, you know, they call them the stateies. Every guy that I talked to after this whole occurrence who was talking about who was it, they were like, oh, it was the damn stateies, wasn't it? Yep, they'll get you every time. Because apparently there's a lot of like criminal behavior that goes on on I-91 through Vermont down through Massachusetts and the stateies are trying to like bust all of them. So basically got pulled over for the taillight, right? State trooper comes over and he's like license and registration, you know, you're tail lights busted and we were like we literally had no idea i'm so sorry give him you know finley's license and our car registration and as soon as he took the registration i looked at finley and i was like our registration just expired really recently and he was like ah oh, we were waiting to do that weren't we until we moved to vermont like for some stupid reason both of us were like you know we'll just get new license plates and update our car registration and get new licenses and all that kind of stuff when we move so we don't need to do it right now lesson learned please don't do that ever the state trooper comes back to the car and he goes your registration is expired and i was like i know sir told him the whole thing we're living in virginia right now but we're actually like about to go an hour away to this airbnb and we're going to stay there for the weekend because in the morning we're touring this vermont house and we're really jazzed about it and if we get it you know we're going to move to vermont and we're going to get vermont licenses and vermont license plates and register it there and all those types of things and he was like like he just had enough of me you know what i mean he was like that's not how it works and i was very apologetic like i know i'm so sorry sir so stupid of me like i know it was stupid and i just i would never really procrastinate these types of things either but for this reason i just like i don't know i didn't want to do it in virginia where we're living because it's like a temporary place and if we did it it would feel more like we're permanently living here you know what i mean and he was just like 
that's not how it works. So um, I'm gonna have to impound your vehicle and um, the tow truck will take you anywhere you need to go. And we were like, what? Keep in mind, we have the dogs in the back seat, you know, all of our stuff. And we're just like, excuse me, could you say that again? And he was like, yeah, I mean, you can't prove that you are registered to this vehicle. So how do I even know that it's your car? And I was like, because I have it insured right here. Like I have, I pay vehicle insurance on this car. We both do. So like showed him the insurance card and he was like, yeah. I know that you can prove that, but like now in post George Floyd era, we have the accountability of all police officers for the most part <laughs> when they want to turn them on <laughs> wearing body cams. So he was um, filming me the entire time. And so there's no like excuses. And I really only bring that up to say, I like that we have that level of accountability with the police now, you know what I'm saying? Like that's something that we should have had always. But at the same time, it's like, there's no warnings anymore. And I'm also not trying to say that I'm above the law, but I thought that maybe he would be like, please, like as soon as you get home, register this vehicle. You can go toward the house, but like, you know, I in my head, I was fantasizing that that would be the reality. But of course, no, he was just doing his job. And so he was like, yep, we're gonna impound your vehicle. And I was like, sir, we're on a road trip. Like our life is in the vehicle. And he was like, not my problem, basically. So long story short, Finley, the dogs and I got into the back of a tow truck and they towed our car to a hotel that we were staying at. And keep in mind, this was at like midnight, okay? And so a lot of the hotels around that we were calling to were like closed for the night, like not taking new reservations, but we finally found one um, that was dog friendly and stayed there for the night. And they took our car to impound like 10 minutes away from the hotel. And when the tow truck guy dropped us off, he basically was like, so I'm gonna let you know some loopholes, all right? The impound lot will tow to a private residence. So I went to Instagram stories and I asked if anybody was in Florence, Massachusetts and was able to have me tow my car to their driveway. Because if it was towed to the street, it could have gotten impounded again for blown registration. So I woke up and got it towed to a driveway. Shout out to Gianna in Florence, Massachusetts. Love you legend, okay? Really helpful. She wasn't even in town, but she just gave me her address and all they needed was, you know, the permission from her that we could tow it there. And then in the driveway of her house, I called the Oregon DMV and they gave me all of the information that I needed because all we needed was a DEQ test. So basically in Oregon, if you're registering a vehicle, you would go and get your emissions tested. So it's like road safe, you know? So that was like the one roadblock in the way of us re-registering our car with our Oregon plates. And so I don't live in Oregon anymore. So I had to call the DMV and tell them the situation. My car's impounded, what can I do? And he was like, oh, honestly, this happens a lot of the time. And um, all you're gonna need to do is get an exemption letter from the DEQ office to say that you can't take that emissions quality test. And we trust that your vehicles, you know, it's the same vehicle that you had before. So the emissions are gonna be the same. So um, it's fine, just fill out that form, send it back to me, I'll file it in the system. And when the DMV, you know, sees that you're trying to re-register your vehicle, they'll just bypass that part completely. So after I got the DEQ exemption letter filled out in the driveway of her house, and I emailed it to him. It was just all smooth sailing. And then I was able to renew our registration and pay for that all and then screenshot the receipt in case that we got pulled over again on the way home and show the police officer, no, I paid for it. We just haven't gotten the new stickers for our license plate yet, right? But then when I was sitting in the driveway, I was like, I still have a busted tail light. And I had told Finley to watch the dogs and stay at the hotel. And I made him do the job of looking for a mechanic for me around the address that I was going to. And so he sent me to a mechanic that he already called ahead to and fit me in for the day because it was a Friday afternoon when I was doing it for Easter weekend. I drove to the mechanic. He was like, yep, your husband just called me. I can totally do the tail light. And he fixed that. And then because of the absurdity of last week, of course, he came over to me after fixing the tail light and was like, so I really recommend that you leave your car here because it's unsafe for you to drive. Um, the steering wheel is loose. There must be a nut or a bolt loose in it. And I can change that for you, give you an oil change after because I see you need one and uh, you'll have to leave your car here and I'll do it in a couple hours. And I was like, what? And Finley and the dogs are still at the hotel and we had done late checkout. And so I was like, 
All right, well, um, my husband is still at the hotel and he's about to be like kicked out of the hotel maybe around like one. And so I need to go and get him and my dogs and bring them back here. And he was like, okay, how far is the hotel? Is it really close? I was like, yeah, just a couple minutes down the road. And he was like, okay, I mean, I don't recommend you drive it because the steering wheel could come off in your hands, but you go really quickly, you go pick him up. So I'm like, okay, so I go chaotically. <laughs> actually not chaotically driving. I very safely drove, drove back to the mechanic and we got the dogs all settled in the back seat and stuff like that. And the mechanic was basically just like, all right, so uh, you guys can go walk around town because this is going to take me about like an hour, hour and a half. And we were like, okay. So we go and get food, but it is violently windy and I'm wearing a skirt and I forgot my stockings. My skirt kept blowing around, blowing up and I was so freezing and I kept having to like take it down. And I was like, God, I can't be walking around town right now. You know, I was not prepared for the weather basically. And I needed to go hang out in the car or in the mechanic shop with the dogs. Okay. And also I didn't really want to leave the dogs for that long. So then I went back and I hung out in the back of the car with the dogs and I was just reading my book, waiting on him to finish another car before he started working on ours and he had already like pulled it into the shop and um he had put it on like the the lift the mechanic lift and i didn't know that we were just like sitting you know on top of a lift that he could lift up at any moment but i was in the back seat just reading my book and then i just feel the car raise and he just pressed the button and I've been told now that this is like very illegal for him to do So I'm not gonna say where we went, but the guy was an icon and a, a wacky legend He was really silly. So I'm not surprised that he did this. No warning by the way was just sitting in the back of the car He just presses the button. And I start being suspended into the air in the middle of <laughs> in the middle of the mechanic shop in Massachusetts. And I'm like, where, what is happening? Like, where, what is my life? And then by the time that the mechanic finished up all his work, we were safely able to drive off that property finally. We looked at the time and we were like, well, shit, we missed the open house. <laughs> the reason why we came up here in the first place. And so we called our real estate agent and we were like, hey, Robert, so uh, yeah, well, we had already told him that we weren't going to be able, like I had sent him an email from the side of the road when we were being, you know, impounded, our car was or whatever. I had sent him an email being like, we're not gonna be at the open house at 10 a.m., Robert, like due to some circumstances, basically told him the circumstances and he was like, yeah, the Massachusetts police are very strict. So just know that, especially at that area, those specific exits. I think it's from like exit 30 to exit 35 or so in northern Massachusetts right before you get up to like Deerfield area The cops are really populated around that area. We saw so many after we had gotten back on the highway So basically we called him and he was like, yeah, she's not showing it anymore today But you know the owner of the house could show you guys it tomorrow in the morning if you wanted But at that point we had spent so much money on a hotel an Airbnb that we were not not able to actually go to but thank god he gave us a refund back due to you know extenuating circumstances we weren't able to get to the airbnb for those nights um but also getting our car out of impound was an insane amount of money paying a taxi driver to take me to the impound lot in the morning and you know paying for the mechanic work all of these things i'm not going to tell you the number but it was an insane amount of money that i'm very grateful that i was able to pay actually because if i was not able to do that or didn't have a credit card or you know all those types of things i would have just been shit out of luck stranded in fucking Massachusetts. You know what I mean? And that would have really sucked. So definitely very grateful that we were able to like financially get out of this situation. And with the help of Gianna and nice strangers and people who were just being friendly and, you know, helpful and all those types of things. Cause the situation was just so overwhelming and very like you feel strong armed by the law, you know, when something like that happens to you and it kind of just feels really unlucky and terrible. And like, you just need to be self-sufficient and solve it any way that you can. But anyways, so um, after he said that we could see it the next morning, Finley and I both looked at each other and we were like, do we even want to do that? Because there was already so many offers on the home and she had already shown it 40 times. Four zero, okay? So she was probably gonna take one of those offers. And he was like, yeah, you could see it in the morning, but because we had just paid for all of that money, we didn't wanna buy another hotel room, you know, and wait another night and see it in the next morning. So we were basically like, okay, be honest, Robert. Do you see us there? And he was like, honestly, I do not. The house is not set back enough from the road. There's not enough land for the pigs and a garden. Like it's just a small piece of property. And I feel like the house is cheaply made. Like the floors are slanted. Like it has some issues, you know? And I was like, hmm, totally. Well, if you put it like that, 
I don't think we want to see the house anymore. We'll go up right now and drive by it and just make sure, but I'm just going to pass on the showing tomorrow and um, we'll just see what else comes up in the coming weeks. And he was like, yeah, actually I emailed you guys another listing and that one's not going to come up until like early May or something, but I have the address if you guys want to go and drive by it and see if it's something that you would be interested in. So we ended up going back up to Vermont with all of our prepared you know car and documents and all those things and passed by so many police officers right where we had just gotten pulled over the night before like we i shit you not passed by four separate cops pulling people over for traffic violations and stuff like that which is just crazy so be on the lookout okay if you ever go in that area but we went up and we um drove by the house that we wanted to initially tour which i'll put in footage of the drive-by now That ain't the house. Brooke is nice though. I like yeah, the Brooke. Nice. And basically after we did that, I was like, oh my God, yeah. I don't want to tour that house because we had been bamboozled by the listing photos. So they had listed the house to make it seem like the backyard was the front yard so that it appeared more set back from the very busy road that it was situated on. So I don't want a house that's like very road fronted, especially on such a busy road because my dogs like to run around. Also, if we have more farm animals, like when they, you know, the pigs have never gotten out here in Virginia, but they they used to get out a lot in Oregon. They would push through the fence and go find apple trees or little snacks in our neighbor's yards and stuff like that. The grass is always greener on the other side when you're in a pasture, right? But anyways, we just decided that that was definitely not the house. And then we got the address for the second house that's not on the market yet, but we have heard talk about it from our real estate agent. And we went and drove by that one too. And I loved it. I think I only took a video of it on my phone, but it's on like a little bit smaller piece of property than the other one so I think that it's also gonna have like a land issue in that way but god was it stunning they had like a covered garage with like wood storage the house was either a two bedroom two bath or maybe three bedroom two bath which would be really ideal they also had like a workshop with a studio above it which would be fucking badass anyway the male person's about to come up to my house she's driving down my driveway right now but basically I was really happy that we got to at least do those drive-bys so it wasn't all for nothing, but it was definitely a very chaotic and insane trip. I'm inside now because not only did the postal woman come up the driveway and I didn't want her to see me being a weirdo filming myself on my front porch, but the lawn is also being mowed and it's really loud out there. So we're here now in the sunflower bowl chair and I'm gonna finish this long story long, the like potential property that's gonna be listed in May. That was really nice to see too. And like, maybe it works out, maybe it doesn't, but either way, we're just hanging out here at this guest house in the meantime and just looking every day at new properties and stuff like that that get listed because a lot of Vermont properties don't get listed in January through March because March is the snowiest month. So a lot of people who are selling their homes are waiting for the property to look more pretty with less snow on it and we'll take more listing photos and list it in like Vermont's spring. We've actually never visited in April and it was like the snow was melting but it's still like their mud season. So there was still like some patches here and there at least around like the outer area of Brattleboro where we're looking. But anyways, we're just looking forward to seeing more listings as they come up in the warmer months. But I also just want to summarize this as a huge learning lesson, okay? And I really hope that you guys understand like how crazy last week was for me, for us, both of us, but really just see that I learned a lot of lessons and I don't really need any I told you so's or blame and shame in the comments section because when I was sharing about the car being impounded and us being stranded in freaking Massachusetts and not knowing what to do or like what the next step was, you know, the night that it was all happening before I figured out that we could tow it to Gianna's house in the morning and stuff, I was like asking for advice and just like got so many unhappy helpful DMs from just, I guess, sad people or people who just really wanted to be like, that was really stupid of you. That was so dumb of you to take a road trip up and to a state that your car is not registered in. Obviously they're 
going to see your license plate. Obviously, they're going to see your broken taillight. Why would you drive with a broken taillight? Like, we didn't know. We didn't know. Okay. And I think that most of you understand, you know, all aspects of this story. And obviously, I got a lot of helpful DMs too, but I just was kind of surprised at the amount of DMs that I got that were just like kind of I told you so's or just like that cop was just doing his job. Like, I didn't realize how many people love the police. <laughs> Couldn't be me. But anyway, we very, very well know now that we need to renew our registration on our vehicle and keep it up to date all the time and not just be like, I'll do that later. I'm really working on that in my life in general right now about the whole like, I'll do that when we move mindset because there's a ton of things where I either don't want to do it here in Virginia because this is just a temporary living situation and I really love to harp on that about how temporary it is but at the end of the day it's like but we're here in the meantime and this is where we're living. Part of me is still being more reserved about even starting the spring garden here because I'm like well what if we just leave and then I've planted a bunch of seeds that I can't like tend to and then I get really in my head about it but I need to realize that like either way if I plant a garden here it will benefit someone you know <laughs> like my in-laws could come over and harvest it and stuff like that and sometimes it's nice to do stuff like that to benefit not only yourself but other people but I definitely I have a lot of things in my mind when it comes to like when I move to Vermont I'm gonna do x y and z and I don't know why I'm saying all of this basically to just say that I see a lot of your comments when you're like why would you ever want to leave Virginia? Doesn't it just seem like the best place ever? And I'm like, yes, but also we have a lot of issues with this house. And to update you, the dead stench around this area, Finley's closet is like right behind the camera. It has gotten significantly better in the past week. It's still like kind of lingering, but yeah, that odor is still kind of um, hanging out. And instead of just paying tons and tons of money to find some dead carcass in the walls or having somebody come and check the chimney or whatever I'm like can't we just move let's just move while I love Virginia and I love being able to live here and be closer to family and all those kinds of things this isn't where we want to be long term but a lot of um, our extended family is like you're never gonna find a better place than Virginia and it's like let us find that out you know sometimes you just need to take a risk and take a step and be like let's just check out Vermont and we're really gung-ho about checking out Vermont and just starting a family there and seeing how it goes so yep just still on the lookout for that home y'all but I wanted to give you a general life update let's just chalk up last week to a big learning lesson overall okay that's really the mantra that I'm um, going back to and this week is gonna be a great week it's gonna be jam-packed full of work um, our friends are getting married this weekend obviously like I mentioned earlier so there's just like a lot to get done in the meantime I need to continue on with my day because this has been like the longest intro of all time well this wasn't supposed to be an intro this was supposed to be a story time thank you for all of the dms of love and support and you know all those kinds of things that you were sending while I was going through some chaotic life events in an astrological sense it's Aries season and I'm also a Libra moon and we just had a full moon in Libra literally on this past Friday so I was just feeling the moon really hard and um, for my sign and my placements and all that kind of stuff it was just a very high energy week and just kind of like a lot of ruckus going on so I'm feeling more leveled out now and we had a beautiful Easter yesterday with family and we're able to see everybody and update them on all of our crazy stories and all those kinds of things and bond and eat delicious food and go on a walk and all those kinds of things so it was good and I hope you guys had a good Easter too if you celebrate and um, let's Let's just continue this week. All right. I love you. I also just got a PR package and I want to show it to you. Guys, this is so exciting. Look who sent me a package. Oh my God. I seriously, I have a Larabar every day of my life. And um, I posted about them on Instagram and tagged them or something like that. And they replied back and they were like, can we send you a package? So here's some Lara love. They sent me, oh, it's like some fun Fetty in here. It's a party up in here. Sheesh. They sent me a little disco ball. Oh my God, I'm gonna hang this in this window. Or where gets the most sun? But the reason Lara Bar sent me this actually is because it's their 20th birthday and they wanted me to be able to celebrate with them. So cute. Even though it's our birthday, we got you a gift. Show us how you're celebrating. I'm celebrating by eating a ton of Lara Bars today. They sent me so many fun new flavors. <gasps> they also sent me a homesick candle called Birthday Party. Oh my God, I love homesick. This is fire. They stepped out. 
Go off PR team. We got cashew cookie, pecan pie, my freaking fave chocolate chip cookie dough. Slay. So many of the ones I haven't tried. Banana chocolate chip, cherry pie, almond cookie, almond butter chocolate chip, mint chip brownie, lemon bar, and cocoa cashew chew. <laughs> Sheesh, come on now. So many of these I haven't tried. They also sent me a cutie pie tote bag. Love that. I'm gonna bring this to the grocery store when I'm getting my Lara bars and people will think I'm very exclusive. Cause I am. Wow, thank you Lara bar. This is awesome. I need to arrange this for an Instagram photo now. Just PR things. Love y'all. Thanks for listening to this very long intro. I was rewarded with a gift. All right, I'm about to head off to the post office with my Easter basket that I'm gonna repurpose as probably a car organizational basket because these really come in handy for like sorting all of your things. But I'm about to go send off my plain products, shampoo and conditioner empties. They just like give you a return label and you can send them off whenever. And then a Depop package as well as the payment for our ticket that we got in Massachusetts. Boo hoo. Anyway, this is what we got in our little Easter basket from Finley's mom. Looks like my little Easter Bunny ate some of these before he went to work this morning, but we got these little milk chocolate lambs, a Kinder Egg, not the OG, y'all know, and then um, the Gold Bunny from Lint, some Peter Popcorn Tails, and this cute little plant, which I'm very jazzed about, and I'm gonna put it over here in the window by these little mushroom tiles that my friend Connor got me for my birthday. Aren't they so pretty? I just love the coloring of them too in this window with this plant. My monstera is getting gigantic. I literally took this cutting from repotting and splitting a one monstera into two giant big pots and then also that's their baby. Monsteras grow like freaking crazy in my presence. Anyways, Let's go to the post office, but Rue's staying here, this little sleepy head. The post office went well. I also got some bills paid and I saw my mother-in-law when I went into town. But now I'm back home and I just got this box out of the recycling. I just sent one last thing off on my Depop, but I'm pretty sure everything else that's on there now probably isn't going to sell. And um, this is not sponsored at all, although I have worked with them in the past and I like the brand, but ThreadUp does like a clean out bag and now they do it where you can like instead of having the bag mailed to you it's like a more sustainable option i guess for them to just send the label that you can print out wherever and then just use like any box as long as you're shipping under 30 pounds of clothes which i am and i really like doing the clean out bag with them because they will responsibly recycle any clothes that don't sell on their website so I'm gonna send them some of the gently used stuff that's not selling on my Depop and the stuff that I was going to donate because most clothing donations don't actually make it to the shelves. <laughs> Truth be told. And I've already sold clothes on ThreadUp before, so I'm just gonna do that again. I'm gonna put all of the clothes in here and send off that pile probably tomorrow. But I do have to do an at-home workout in a little bit here before I stream tonight and I'm looking so super cute today in my little sundress and cardigan with my adorable little, um, I wouldn't call them clogs. They're more like a covered sandal. So part of me is wanting to not get into my workout gear and just really ride out this outfit for a while, but I also know that I need to work out. And I just drank a protein coffee so that I could have a little extra oomph. Anyway, let's fill up this box. All right. Packed full. This was the perfect size box. I'm feeling really proud of myself. <laughs> All right, workout from home fit check. I am so obsessed with these leggings from Girlfriend Collective. They're like their light blue cloud leggings or something like that. And they're so freaking cute. And then this top is either from Girlfriend or from Pact, but Lindsay gave it to me. And then this bra is also from Girlfriend. And I got my freaking watch on. I'm gonna go do like a uh, upper body pull workout today. And unfortunately, Rue, you're not coming. No, you're staying here. My in-laws conveniently have a little home gym with more equipment and weights than I have here. I have two five pound dumbbells, a foam roller and like a yoga mat and some resistance bands, but I don't know where they are. So I normally go over there when I wanna do a home workout and they just have a little gym in their barn. So I'm gonna go over there and freaking pump it up. Hell yeah. Hi, my pretty girl, Dinah. Love you, Bisher. Look at this photo of Finley that's on the wall in here. So freaking cute. I can't. 
All right, it's purple flirt time. Today, I added in two strawberries with the tops on because I have some fresh strawberries and I just figured I might as well use them up before they be going bad soon, you know? So it's probably a better idea. And then I also threw in some spinach because why not? Greens are good for you. Cheers, let's see if this one's good. I like the strawberry aspect. Put in too much tahini though. I eyeballed it, not a good idea. All right, y'all, I just took a little quick rinse off, but now I'm back in my same outfit and jewelry as before. I also put back in my little carrot clip that my friend Corey got me for my birthday. It's so cute, because I'm a little carrot top. And well, I'm wearing the same thing as before, but I don't have my sweater on. I think I left it downstairs, but what can you do? And I really didn't need to wash my hair or anything because I washed it yesterday for Easter Sunday. And then also tomorrow, I'm gonna take another shower after Zumba and wash my hair then. You didn't really need to know that, but what you did need to know is that I did a quick rinse and I did the old PTSD. Pits, slits, tits, and dicks. I learned that recently and it's funny as hell. So that's all I did, a little quick rinsey poo, all right? And now I'm hanging out on the couch. My dogs are here, Rue's over here, Larry's over here, and I'm about to start editing some of this vlog because it's been long just for one day and I need to cut it down a little bit. Hey y'all, I just got off Twitch, y'all. I was streaming for about two and a half hours and I forgot to show you the chat. Normally I'll have everybody say hello to you, but I forgot to do that. But we were talking about the book that we read for my March book club, which was Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner, AKA Japanese Breakfast. And I loved the book. So we were kind of doing like a book club discussion for Mother Truck and Bookworms, which is my bookstagram page where I host a monthly book club. And then I was also talking about how our next book, well, the book that we're currently reading for April, if you want to join in, is Taste My Life Through Food by Stanley Tucci. We love him, we stand him. T, 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 spell it with your P's. Anybody seen Easy A? Love that movie. He was also stellar in The Devil Wears Prada and a bunch of other movies. But also I've been loving this because it's a memoir about food as well. So was Crying in H Mart. Well, it was about way more than that, but you know, just about their culture and both books have that in common, like their connections through their family and passed down recipes and stuff like that. And this book even has some recipes in it, like family recipes and stuff, which is awesome and I've been bookmarking them. But yeah, so we did the book club chat and I also played with my Gilmore Girls family on Sims, which was really fun. I made Lorelai and Luke Danes and then I made them have a baby together. And in the game tonight, they had said baby and it was twins, two boy twins. And I wanted the baby to be a girl because I wanted them to have Rory, you know? So then I did a little cheat code or whatever and edited the baby's gender on one of them to be a girl. And then we literally rehomed the second baby and like transferred we transferred it to another house. Anyway, that baby's gonna live its best life and then come knocking on my damn door, probably uh, a couple playthroughs from now when they're like grown up and a teenager and they're like, hey, just coming back, checking in on my mom. We named the second baby Cancelled Gilmore. <laughs> anyway, it was a chaotic night on Twitch. As a reminder, I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on twitch.tv slash Megan Hughes. Except I won't be streaming this Friday because I'm going to a rehearsal dinner for Tim and Cassidy. But anyway, <laughs> most Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern. I'm on here. Now, it's really late. Go ahead, sausage. Such cool dogs. So cool in your cool collars. Last outing of the night. Come on. She always does this. <laughs> Tries to run to where I can't... F See her. Rue, that's why you have the collar on, so I can make sure that your little tiny body is using the restroom. I know, chuckle monsters one and two. So beautiful, this dog. Stunning. I'm about to start doing a little reading. Gorgeous morning, Rue. Morning glory. Hello, darlings. It's a lovely Tuesday morning, and I'm going to Zumba. Pump it. Louder. Larry loves clam. Chowder. Just kidding. Larry's not in the car right now. Total cows burned 462. Do we trust this, by the way? Like, I oftentimes am like, really? That many? 462, one class? Come on. Anyway, it's time for my Larabar. And also to freaking crank this AC. Oh my God, I'm a sweaty Betty. I just got the best news ever though, that on Saturday, oh, bye. I'm talking to my camera like a fucking lunatic. Oh my God, her leggings are so cute. You know, I want butt cheek leggings suddenly that I'm in my gym era. You know, the ones that kind of like have an outline to your butt, I want those. So if you guys have any links or any kind of 
companies you want me to check out or maybe there's a kind of name do you know what I mean like around your butt there's like a line so it like sculpts your ass or it's like more perforated around your ass honestly I need some butt cheek leggings ASAP okay this is too high now you know when you blast AC and then like two seconds later you're like wait never mind <laughs> okay um class was really good even though Lucy totally just saw me filming that's fine Lucy's cool I actually asked Lucy to switch spots with me today in class so I could take a little iPhone video of one of the songs and I've never done that before I was really nervous because I get really in my head about filming classes but people do it all the time like especially on my Saturday class when there's a good song people will run to the side and be like woohoo and like filming on their phone and nobody ever says anything on those days so I just need to have that same energy you know what I mean but for some reason I think because I'm online I do get in my head about it because I don't want anybody to be like I don't know oh she gonna put me on YouTube because some people do know that I'm on YouTube in my Zumba class but not all of them just a, a select few if you will anyway I just found out some really good news that on Saturday three of my favorite instructors are going to be teaching the class so I'm really excited to go on Saturday to class woohoo I'm gonna go home. All right, y'all, I'm gonna go drop off this big old box at the post office, cause she's prepaid. It is purple flirt time, y'all. Rue, how is it that every time I tidy, I'm really just tidying up your toys, Tinker Tom? How is that, huh? Maybe you should learn the cleanup song, and that would be a little more helpful for your mom. Guys, I just got a package dropped off, and this is what was inside. So let's unwrap it together. It was addressed from the one and only Miss Lucinda Lee Mon. And she sent me this for my birthday. She sent me one other thing. It was some peanut butter cups with farm animals on them and sunflowers and stuff. Oh my God. And then she said, something bigger is coming. I found it for you at the flower show in Boise and I'm gonna send it to you, holy shit. It's a little she shed sign. She said that it's for our future Vermont home to hang outdoors. Really love this, it's incredible, wow. Thanks, Lance. Also, I haven't talked to you in a little while because I showered and got myself all ready and then I had some family over and now we need to eat something. So I'm gonna go and make a little snacky. Actually, you're right, Larry. We have a little snacky right here for you. Not for me. He's obsessed with lammies. He can't get enough. That's a long stand for a guy like you. Okay, I'm gonna give the little sit. I'm gonna give the little one to Rue. Hey, hey. The little one to Rue. <laughs> Did you see he just tried to give a high five? Sit. Okay. Wow. You're a monster. I may actually have to go to a family dinner tonight. So I was not told about that in advance, but I just heard about it from family. So I was like, mm, okay, well, I guess, you know, it's Tuesday, so I don't stream tonight. So I could go to that, but I don't know any details about it. What time, what we're eating, where we're eating, how close, how, how far, I, I don't know anything. But all I know is that if I'm hungry, I should have a little snack but not a full meal until I know if we're going to the dinner or not. I made this iced lemon pound cake. Well, I'm pretty sure it was called the iced lemon loaf, so they didn't steal the whole, you know, Starbucks name. But I made this for a Patreon video where I talked about my past year being weed free. So I'll put the thumbnail and the link on the screen if you wanna go and check it out, but cheers. Mm -hmm. I made this two days ago and it's still so good. Of course, why wouldn't it be? I've recently become obsessed with this snack again. Pretzels, cream cheese, doesn't matter the brand of either, just delicious. Mm -hmm. Okay, my next question for you guys is, what is going to be the next sign? This can't stay out while it's freaking 60 something degrees outside, you know what I mean? So please let me know your best ideas for spring. I'll tell you mine. Ring a ding ding, it's spring <laughs> with a tulip holding a bell or pressing a bell. I don't know, like the stem, like a little leaf could be ringing a bell. Ring-a-ding-ding, it's spring. Comment below your thoughts, please. I need more ideas for the spring sign to give Finley a project. Okay, we're going to family dinner. Cute little earrings, my little ginkgo leaves, my little dress from a boutique in town. Outfit of the night, what are you wearing? White polo? All of pants? I'm wearing knee highs as well as my brown shoes and I need to grab a purse from downstairs but we have to head out, we're late. Please listen to this today, okay, for me. I've been listening to this podcast episode and it's very good, but I have some thoughts. Damn, it's bright. Okay, I'm about to go into Pilates by the way, but this episode is so funny because, well, really whenever Matthew McConaughey talks, he speaks in like riddles, you know? He'll be like, it's just about the proverbial tomorrow 
and it's like, what is that? What are we talking about here? <laughs> you know what I mean? And sometimes it can feel a little over your head, but it's not so over your head that you're like, no, actually, what are you talking about? Like, he'll always bring it back, but it's so funny to listen to because you do lose him for a second and then get back to it. But he's absurd. I love my papaya. Anyway, we gotta go to Pilates. Gotta get my mat. Pilates was fantastic as always. My instructor, y'all know, I just love her. She's the silliest of willies and she tells the funniest stories. Today she told us that she also teaches a children's class at a different gym and they're all like six year olds. And she was like, they're so cute. Like they just say the craziest stuff. Like one of the kids, because she does, I think I've told you guys this story before, but when she like models the exercises for us, she'll be like, so we do e -e 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 -e, like eight of those and then we'll go ooh, 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 ooh. and then like eight of those or something. E -e -e, ooh, ooh, ooh. You got it? And we're all like, yeah, like I love the monkey sounds, they're so funny. So I guess like when she was doing the ee 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 ooh ooh at the kids class, one of the kids was like, um, why do you make that sound? And she goes, because I'm old. <laughs> and the kid was like, I thought you were only 14. <laughs> She's like, I don't know how old she is. Honestly, I've gotten so bad at guessing people's ages. Like this woman might be 40. I'm trying a new Lara Bar flavor today, okay? Almond cookie, we're gonna get after it. It tastes fruity and dates and apples are the second and third ingredients. So that makes a lot more sense. I have an update for you guys though. So I need to not be eating and talking. On Wednesdays after Pilates, I normally stay after class and then I'll work out on the other equipment. And I fucking forgot my headphones today and I don't wanna work out without headphones. So I'm gonna go home and use my in-laws little gym instead. I need to just keep a pair of headphones in the car. All right, I lied. I came back to get my protein smoothie in. First things first, okay? before I go back to do more upper body. What do I have to do today? It's either an upper body push or an upper body pull. It's one of the two. Yep, today is upper body pull. But I also was so hungry driving home, I had to come back and make this. And the house is not only being painted, but it's also landscaping day. <laughs> So there's a lot of edging and lawn mowing going on right around the house. And I need to film a sit down video later today. And so I'm kind of trying to like kill some time in between because I think most of the guys are gonna go home around three. So then I can be showered, ready to film around three when everybody's leaving, when it's a little bit quieter. Um, and then I'm streaming later tonight, so cheers. I also think when I go over to my in-laws, I might bring my dogs to hang out in the gym with me, because they're super cute. Such a good boy, this guy, Larry. Such a good boy who loves the sunshine. I also today need to drop off these forms at the post office for Finley. It's his passport renewal forms, and I had these mailers already at the house, so I wanted to come back and grab that too. Why are you more interested in hanging out by the door? I told you we're doing a workout. <laughs> I came back home after I worked out and went to the post office to drop off that passport package. And I got this in the mail from Luca and Gray, which is Aspen Ovard's old clothing company because she just did like a clean out sale, basically. I love Aspen and I love Luca and Gray, so I'm happy to support her. And I don't have any tops that are so fun like this. So I got this top that has like these little cutouts on the side. So it's like a high neck ribbed tank and I got it in a large so it would fit my bris. Also because they were sold out of so many sizes. Everything was going like whoo so fast because everything was like super cheap for the sale, you know, the final sale. So I'm excited to try this on and see how it looks. Does it look good? <laughs> Thanks Aspie. I don't know why I'm saying thank you as if this was a PR package. I fully purchased that myself. Love supporting it. Queen. I just have to read this to you guys because I just got this statement in the mail from our mobile vet for the pigs and it feels like their report card or something because he came for the physical exam and then they mailed this to me. Two pigs are examined. Each is easygoing, well-behaved, and easy to handle. Five stars. Gold stars, that is. External inspection reveals no evidence of external parasites, though the skin is dry. Respiratory system is okay. They're intact, meaning they're not spayed. And everything down there looked okay on each. Eyes look clear, as do ears. Have discussed their nutrition and housing, including a wallow in the summer. 
they have one. He just came in the end of winter and it was really cold, so the wallet wasn't filled up. Have recommended fish oil capsules for skin and stay away from bathing them, except colloidal oatmeal lotion is okay. Consider deworming yearly due to the fact that they are rooting around a lot. Discussed techniques to trim their feet. They have been vaccinated with rabies, rhiny shield, and for tetanus. An annual booster is recommended for each of these. I honestly thought this bill would be so much more money than it is. I'm shocked. My vet in Oregon was astronomical in comparison. And I really thought that this vet would be so expensive because we live in horse country and horse people spend so much money on their animals. So I thought maybe that would be like the norm, but he's not just like an equestrian vet. He's like an all around uh, vet. Anyway, it was good. So I'm gonna pay this bill. Instead of having a bagel Sammy today, I'm having my egg Sammy on Dave's bread because I'm out of bagels and I forgot to get more and I'm too busy to go today. But it's actually probably good that I'm having it on this bread because Dave's bread has more protein in it. So I do be needing that today as I did two workouts and I need the extra protein. Hey y'all, it's been multiple hours since we last spoke because I had my like bigger lunch and then showered minus washing my hair, changed and filmed a brand deal that's due on Friday morning and today is Wednesday. So I need to spend all of tonight and then tomorrow editing it. I just have been getting B-roll for it in the meantime, but I'm just sitting on the porch now and I'm going to start doing more editing both on that video and on this current vlog and Larry is looking so cute just hanging out here next to the rug that I had to drape over the side of the porch because he threw up on it the other night and it was so stinker and terrible I had to remove it from the home yep a little embarrassing of me to tell them that Larry but it's true Finley just got home from getting his rental suit for our friend's wedding I forgot to tell you guys he's being a groomsman groomsman duties your second time being a groomsman right my 14th liar Okay, this is Rue's new song I made up for her while you were gone. Bingo, bingo, bongo, bingo, bingo, bongo, chaco, taco. Bingo, bingo, bongo, 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 Mrs. Longo. That's what she wants to go by now is Mrs. Longo. And she plays the bongos. Do you see Larry has one drop of water on his nose? That's so funny, Larry. That's so funny. Can y'all see the drop of water? It's a very high definition. It's a beautiful night, Larry. Beautiful boy. Beautiful woman. Mrs. This is Longo. Rue, you gotta get out of the pig pen. They might think that you're a little piece of food. No, they would never do that to you. They know that you're a living Tinker Tom. Hi, Peachy. Just filled up your mud hole. There's some little purple flowers around their mud hole too, which is pretty cute. I just added more water in there. Don't be shy, Peach. Don't be camera shy. You don't want to go back in? Okay, that's all right. See you later. Ducky was just in here and she was trying to make the hole a lot bigger. So she was being really silly in it. She normally moves her butt around and twerks to make it bigger. It's so funny. But I didn't have my camera right then. I ran to go grab it after. So thirsty, Peach. Larry, what are you doing, big head? You can't get in that way, Larry. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm currently playing a little bit of Quiplash on Jackbox Party Games on Switch with um, my viewers on Twitch. We're getting really wild and crazy. People are up in the chat saying hi to you. Hi, Clock. We're having a really chaotic and fun um, time. We're having community chaotic game night where we're doing Jackbox, Just Dance, and Mario Kart. All right, next round. I had an earlier dinner before the stream that I didn't show because it was pathetic and I need to go grocery shopping immediately and this is like even more pathetic. Um, I made a peanut butter and jelly but with the butt of the loaf. I know some people really don't like that but it's fine to me and I need, just need to get more bread tomorrow anyways. I'm hydrating a lot and I'm about to watch Atlanta season three episode eight. Our chaotic community game night was really good but i after the stream was like okay i can go start editing again and then my laptop was dying and i was like you know what this is a sign i just need to like charge my laptop and not do work for a second because i'm also kind of dealing with something right now where when i get overly tired or i'm doing too many things throughout the day and just like my body starts getting exhausted i have like blurred vision a little bit towards the end of the night and it's just like a sign like you need to go to bed but i'm also a little hungry so i'm having this snack 
and then I'm gonna hit the hay. And my little cutie pie doggies are here. Finley already went to bed. Just found out my Thursday Zumba class in the morning has a sub again. Tomorrow, instead of going in the morning, I'm going to sleep in because I'm really tired and then work all day and edit my videos. And then if I'm done at night, I'm going to reward myself by going to nighttime Zumba with one of my favorite instructors. So that sounds good to me, but I just wanted to update you because in the morning I won't be doing the old, the huge. Morning glory y'all, how's it going? I just got a very exciting package in the mail on this lovely Thursday and I'm going to try it on for you while I talk about um, men. So yesterday, Finley went to go pick up his groomsman suit, right? When he was leaving to go do that, I was like, what time do you have to be there on Saturday, by the way? You gotta be there in the morning, like 9 a.m. Because bridesmaids versus groomsmen take drastically different amounts of time to get ready. So like when my girls got ready, I'm pretty sure that the hairstylist came at like 8 a.m. to get all seven of them ready, you know what I mean? So I'm kind of skewed in that way, I didn't actually know. And he was like, oh, I don't know what time I have to be there. And I was like, you don't know, nobody's told you it's, it's the week of. And he was like, someone's probably told me, but I'm not, I'm not really sure. It's probably somewhere. I don't know where. And I was like, okay, so um, how are you going to find out what time you have to be there? And he was like, well, at the rehearsal dinner, I'm just going to ask them, the bride and groom, what time I have to be there in the morning. And I was like, let me just get this straight. So you're going to ask the bride and groom on their first night of like any wedding event, what time you have to be there in the morning, even though they've already probably told you. And he was like, yep. <laughs> it was giving Meredith in the wedding episodes when she tells Pam, she's like, you know what, I'll just text you. I'm just gonna text you the morning of, and I'll let you know what time I'm gonna be there. And then um, I'll let you know what I want for my entree, chicken or fish. And Pam was like, let me get this straight. You're gonna text me on the morning of my wedding. And Meredith was like, yep. Yep. It's just like, why are men like this? I just texted the groom and was like, what time does Finley have to be there on Saturday? And he was like, the way that I sent this in an entire email out to all of those guys, and probably none of them read it. Like, why did I even send it? And I was like, dude, I know. It's like, we learned nothing from having our own wedding and dealing with all of the things that happens with that and having people, you know, a lot of people to micromanage and stuff like that. Anyway, this is the dress that I got from Reformation. <laughs> and I'm kind of obsessed with it. I got it in the petites because I'm 5'3", so they make petite styles with less fabric so you don't have to get them tailored for anybody 5'4 uh, and under, so. That's me. Anyways, let's try this on and see how it looks. Also, in summary, Finley has to be there anywhere from 12 to 2 on the day of the wedding. I got the full schedule and I have all the details. My little kid keeping behavior. How is somebody supposed to fit into this top? Okay, false alarm, everybody. I just hadn't unzipped the back, so when I was trying it on, it wouldn't come even over my shoulders, and I was like, what's happening? But then I just found the zipper, and now it's all good. But I'm unsure about this dress. Please let me know your thoughts. Either way, I think I'm gonna go shopping today or tomorrow. I could even go, but it's very nice. I mean, it's like this lovely little silk number, but the top and the tummy are really my main areas of concern. It's very like flattering on my, you know, my curves, but I'm not obsessed with how it looks from the side. So like my boobs are so big compared to the models that this part right here, I think is not supposed to sit like this. The model is wearing it like this and it doesn't look like she has any kind of hole right here, but maybe they pinned it closed or something, which I could definitely do like a little pinning. Like if I steamed it or something like that, I think I could wear it like this. What do you guys think for the style of the straps? I'm just not trying to pop a boob in the middle of the reception. That would be really terrible because this is what I'm gonna wear to the wedding, not the rehearsal dinner and for rehearsal dinner, I'll wear something a little bit less dressy. I don't know. I think as I kind of play with the straps more and maybe steam it, I'll like it a little bit better, but I also don't want to like force myself to like it. Please let me know your comments down below, but either way, I really still want to go shopping. <laughs> Finley and I are on another walk and jump scare. Someone put this here. <laughs> Little jaw. Dad's doing this whole walk in a long sleeve black t-shirt and you can't possibly go up the rest of the hill. It's really hot out today. It's gonna be a high of like 87 or something like that. Rue's struggling. You can do it. Look at Larry, just follow Larry. Splash, splash, dog, he's taking a bath. Rue, how about you just kind of lie down in this water and that'll cool you off. Yeah, that'll make you really cool. 
a tadpole's in there. Wow, these dogs are having so much fun. Good girl, Rube. You can lie down. She's going to the source. She said straight to the source. Guys, exciting news. It's currently 2.15 and Finley and I went on a little walk because I had done like the bulk of my editing and I just wanted like a little break. You know, get outside, get the sun on my skin. It's a beautiful day, just beautiful. It is really hot though, so I have to make sure the AC is bumping in here for my little drive I'm about to go on. But I just finished editing my entire brand deal to turn in tonight. So I'm gonna get it finished and turned in even earlier than I expected which is great. So now I'm gonna go shop for a dress because I was telling Finley on the walk about the dress from Reformation and he was like, I feel like if you spent that much money on a dress, you shouldn't make it fit you, you know? Like you should just have a dress that fits and you should go find one of those. And I was like, you're right, I was gonna go shopping anyways. So I'm gonna go do that now in town and just see what I can find. When I get home, if I have some extra time, I can keep editing this vlog and go to Zumba later tonight. So that's my plan. All right, guys, I look naked. I'm not. I just made it into town and I'm gonna go do some shopping and bring you with me because I don't really shop alone very often. So I do need some opinions and may take some pics and send them to Finley or something like that. But he's at work, but I did just see his dad. His dad, when I was pulling out of the driveway, was pulling into my driveway and he gave me like a mold test kit for the house. So a lot of people are theorizing that because Finley's been so allergic to the house. So we're gonna do some test kits around the house and I just happened to be stopped at the end of the driveway anyways because I was checking my mail and I got my registration stickers to put on my license plate so we are all good to go in that area now and um, yeah let's go do some shopping Okay guys, I think I tried on like 11 dresses and I ended up getting two. Unfortunately, the photos were not sending properly. I was trying to send them all to Lindsay to be like, bitch, which one should I get? And I did get the one that she really loved. It's kind of like a pinky magenta. And then I also got the one that has like little peppers on it and little flowers. It's so cute. And the girl who works at that store, so nice. Her name's Chandler. And she like knows my mother-in-law. Uh, not shocking, honestly. She was like, oh my God, that's your mother-in-law? I know like all of Finley's family because I went to school like where you live. I was like, oh my God, this makes a lot of sense. So she was really nice and she lives really close to me. So also made a friend, fun. I'm gonna go home now, it's 3.45. That was a pretty good trip. What are you eggheads doing? What are you doing? Someone left the fence open for you to free range today, huh? No, it's okay if you want to free range. I'm not upset about that. Just not used to seeing you. Oh, hi. You're just taking a nap? There's a lot more eggs in here. These chickens are very nice. I used to take care of my neighbor Olia's chickens and that's why I'm so scared because they would peck me when I tried to take their eggs. They would fly up into their little laying places and be like, um, that's actually for me. Now I have six eggs. Thank you. Oh, where are you going? This one's my favorite. So beautiful. You're a very beautiful hen with fluffy little feet. What are you doing? Still trying to sleep? Okay. Okay, I'm back home now and I made myself a protein shake because I need to go grocery shopping tonight so bad. I'm out of everything. Like everything that I eat every day other than my protein shake is gone from the house. So that's terrible. I did have some leftover things that were in the fridge for breakfast this morning. And when I saw my father-in-law, he gave me a cookie and it was delicious. So <laughs> had that too, but I need to have this and um, fill up on probably just some snacks or something like that until Zumba later tonight. But I wanted to say a little spring update for you that my in-laws are now renting out our barn, but the pigs don't actually use and we don't use the barn. So they're renting out the barn now to a 
lady named Stephanie. She's an icon and she has three horses in there right now. One of them who was a polo horse rescue. So he has like some skin issues just from not being treated well. And I forget his name even though I met him today. And then she has two other horses, Picasso and Lily, and they're so cute. One of them is just whew, stark white and the other is like white and redheaded like me. And the polo horse is actually redheaded too. But um, I wanted to get some footage of them to show you the new horse friends we have on the property, but they're not in the barn right now. Um, she must be out riding. She does like lessons and stuff too. So she must have taken them somewhere. But um, yeah, just wanted to update you that they're very beautiful. And I'm very excited to have more animals on the property that I can go and see because my in-laws have one horse and one donkey. And then chickens are all over here at this property. Same with our pigs and now three more horses. It's a party. <laughs> Rude. That was a huge burp. Okay guys, I'm about to go to Zumba and I'm actually wearing a nice thin cotton shirt because it's so effing hot outside. Really switching it up with my sunflower shirt today. And I'm wearing these free people leggings that are just like in like a nice hunter green and this kind of high necked sports bra from Pact, which is one of my faves. So I'm gonna Zumba Zumba and then I'm gonna go get groceries and Rue really wants to come. All right guys, I just got out of Zumba and I just have to say, I love dancing so much. It's so fucking fun. For lack of a better way to put it, it just makes me so happy every time I get to dance my pants off and it totally gets my heart rate up and I just love performing. <laughs> I really do, man. It's so fun. Like, I think, you know, when I was doing dance classes when I was younger, I just started developing like this urge to perform when it comes to dance and I don't mind it. You know, some people probably get pretty in their heads about like performing or whatever, but I kind of prefer it. Anyway, I made my grocery list and I'm about to go to freaking Wegmans if I can get this Lara bar open. There we go. Oh, these are totally melted. Maybe I should stop keeping them in the car. All right, I'm doing a late night grocery shop, y'all, and this is my list. I really just need to re-up on all of the things and then also get some ingredients at the bottom for um, vegetarian green chili bake, I believe. It's from Half Baked Harvest, but I'm just gonna make it vegetarian because that's what I do with all her recipes, honestly. All right, guys, quick little grocery haul. I got a bunch of Sacred Life and the Bloom GTs. I got a giant thing of spinach, two poblano peppers, some sausages, the Mexican chipotle, and then the caramelized onions and beer. I got some Mexican cheese for a recipe, some tofu so that I can eat this with meals throughout the week. I just need like more ways to get more protein, you know. Another thing of milk, these delicious peach slices. I also got this and I never ever get like microwave meals, but I just really needed something after Zumba tonight that I didn't have to even think about or prepare, so. I just made it. And also my mom growing up would make these all the time when she didn't want to cook. She would just get the Amy's bowls of various things and keep them in the freezer. And it's kind of nostalgic for me. So I wanted to get this one and try it out. Also not very exciting, but I got these three new seasonings just cause we're out of all of those. Some more buns for Finley, some more Dave's bread for me, all of these soups, which are my favorite Amy soups. And then the Zatarans red beans and rice just to make is also so like another easy to prep meal. That one's so good. Now I'm gonna have my little microwave meal and listen to a podcast. Larry, were you hired as the new painter? You're kind of sleeping on the job. This tulip has opened up so much. Look at all of these little hyacinths. And the trees blooming. Love it. Morning glory, y'all. I'm just sitting here with my coffee. It's actually hot enough now that I can put little ice cubes in my coffee. Actually, maybe it's the warm enough season to start making cold brew instead of just watered down coffee. <laughs> Sounds like a better idea to me. Anyway, I was realizing how long this vlog is getting when I was editing it late last night and I gotta wrap it up because I need to try and edit and export it today on Friday. And Finley just told me that because he's a groomsman, he just wants to be the most helpful. And 
and see if they need him to go early to the rehearsal dinner tonight and help them set up or anything like that. So we may have to leave even earlier because he needs to be there at five and it's in Maryland. So it's going to be like an hour and a half drive with traffic anyways. So we were going to leave at 3.30, but we may have to leave even earlier this afternoon. So I have a very small window of time to edit and upload this vlog. But if it doesn't go up today on Friday, it'll go up tomorrow on Saturday. I love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed just seeing, I don't know, my daily routines again and shenanigans and hearing my wild stories about the car registration and learning lessons and housing updates and going to my workout classes with me and, you know, all that kind of good stuff. And when I'm not on here, you can find me on Twitch or on Patreon. All right, stay smiling. Bye, y'all.